Selwyn here from windshrank.com, bringing you the first day of the sixth week of the Dark Horse program by Brian Olzeru. Uh, like usual, I'll leave links below for Brian Olzeru's original video where he explains and outlines a program and goes over exactly what the program consists of and what you have to do to complete the program yourself. I'll also leave links for the Lift Vault website where they've actually taken out uh, all the information from that video, place it into a Google spreadsheet, all for free so you don't have to do all that hard work yourself. They do all the Excel magic for you. You just have to plug in the numbers and the exercises and you're good to go. So this is our first day of the final week of the second phase, uh, three, three week phases with a rest week in between. Um, starting off today, again, we've had some new uh, exercises thrown in there. Uh, this will be the last week of the pause squats with the SS yoke bar. Uh, this is lower body day. If you've been following along, you know that today is uh, squat day, squat day and deadlift day. This phase, we're wrapping up with the pause squats with the SS shirk bar. Um, for the max effort, we did six sets. We were working up for a heavy single today. Uh, just like the first phase, the wrapping up of the, si wrapping up of the second phase this last week, uh, performance is kind of up and down depending on the movements. So I think it, it's kind of just dovetailing nicely into each rest week is kind of kind of working out at the perfect time that every three weeks we take a week off or a deload week. And that's kind of indicative of somewhat poor performance or like lesser, less advancement in the performance based on the weights that I'm using. Now, this is just for me personally. I think the the, the rest week after every third week is kind of great. Uh, we So we wrapped up max effort. We focused on uh, remaining deadlifts as a first movement. We were doing sets of five. We did that for 315 pounds. Uh, we did that for sets across, so 30 reps total. Uh, a lot of tonnage, a lot of volume there. Uh, not something I'm that accustomed to. So I think that's great. Again, with the remaining deadlift, I like to keep the legs as straight as possible or keeping the knees loose. Definitely not locked out. You kind of want to have some flex in the knee. Just kind of Make sure you keep the balance of the weight over the middle of your foot, just like any other lift. Uh, but we're really focusing on pushing the butt back so that we're getting that nice stretch in the hamstring uh, while keeping that knee as straight as possible while being loose and allowing it to bend when necessary. I've noticed that for me personally, when I do go too far below the knee joint, it doesn't really, I start to lose that muscle isolation that mind muscle connection in the hamstring and it turns it into more of a full body deadlift. It transferred that sh it transfers the force over to some quads, which I really don't want to do with the remaining deadlift. I'm personally really focusing on the hamstrings, the glutes, uh, and making sure as well that the lower back stays in that hyperextended position, really flexing that. And that helps ensure you get that nice stretch in the hamstring, which should, in which should carry over to a good strong lift in the deadlift. Uh, if you did have other implements, I believe the program does throw it in there. If you had like a GHR or some other type of dedicated hamstring isolation machine, definitely throw it in there. Uh, I don't have that, unfortunately. Maybe sometime in the future, I'll be able to access one of those. But for right now, given the constraints of the equipment in the gym, uh, you work with what you have, pick a hamstring isolated movement and try not to verge into making that a full body w work a full body movement, try and really focus on isolating those hamstrings there. Uh, we move on again to these pause squats with the SS stroke bar or the safety squat bar. Uh, we did one rep maxes today. Um, you can choose what type of work you want to do. So you could do five threes or ones. Uh, the lift fault spreadsheet kind of has arbitrarily threw them in there and I've been following whatever they've posted in there and I've been pretty happy with how that's been progressing. It's kind of you doing waves of work depending on which movement it is and which day it is. So I'm not doing heavy ones for the pause squats for the for, for the three weeks. It's it's really a five, three, one each. Each movement gets its own five, three or single day and then it kind of rotates along there. So not doing heavy singles day in, day out. We're kind of playing around with it, which is kind of a nice factor of the feature of the program. Uh, we worked our way up from 330, 350, 370, 380. And that was that top set. For the last three sets, we hit 380 for single. I think that was good. The pause probably wasn't as long as it should be. I mean, these pauses, when I ever do them, they're not... <laughs> they feel 
like I'm, it feels like I'm doing a, a relatively good pause at the bottom, but when I watch the video, it's definitely not a pause that would qualify a nice, good, even a one count, probably like a half count pause at the bottom. Um, ideally, you do a, a one, two count at the bottom and then you stand back up. As the weight gets heavy, that kind of wanes and as the fatigue sets in, that, that pause really, really shortens down. So keep an eye on that with your own training, kind of do as I say, not as I do recommendation for you but definitely keep an eye on the pause so that you do have that good training stimulus again uh, one of the points of the pause in the squat or in any deadlift or in any lift for that matter is to remove some momentum out of that lift um, there is some stretch reflex come in there but it's not that big of a picture you're really working on uh, negating any momentum that you have so much like a deadlift at the start doesn't have momentum you're really ramping up from a dead stop with any other lift, we're trying to mimic that. So with a pause squat, we're kind of stopping at the bottom for a, for a pause and it takes away that momentum from that bounce at the bottom as some of that stretch reflex that, like when you fling a rubber band, if you can fling it at the, if you can release at the right point, you get that nice elastic energy there. We're kind of trying to mitigate that, mitigate that momentum at the bottom of the lift in order for us to increase the amount of muscle mass that we have to use and it also helps uh, teach technique and reinforce that good technique because to pause on the bottom of a squat in the bad position is quite difficult um, and if you can that's awesome I guess but ideally you don't do that especially when the weight gets heavy it's going to be really difficult to pause at the bottom of a squat with poor squat like it'd be hard to pause with all the weight on your heels and you're in an off balance position and vice versa for the toes or if you're leaning left or right whatever the case may be it ingrains this need to use better technique and a refinement of the technique that you are using, otherwise the lift is gonna fail. So keep that in mind as well. Again, technique is paramount for all the movements obviously, but sometimes load is gonna creep in there and you're gonna lose some of that technique, but try and keep that technique in the forefront of your mind whenever you're executing these lifts. Not because of injury and pain concerns, but for efficiency of the movement. Um, I would argue that it's really difficult to tie down poor movement patterns to increase an injury risk. Uh, if you know of the studies that show that, I would love to see them below, I can read them. But as far as I'm aware, there have been no studies, no uh, research, no evidence that, support, that, that supports poor movement patterns increase risks of injury. Um, We've all seen people at the gym that have really poor technique and seem to do it week in, week out just because the body adapts to that movement pattern. The reason we want to focus on technique is to increase that efficiency of the movement. It's, it's about being better at a movement so we can lift more weight and lifting more weight helps us get stronger rather than getting weaker or stagnating which is what's going to happen when we do execute with less efficient movement. Think of... Uh, lifting a weight with your arm stretched out. When your arm stretched out here, it's really hard to pick up that weight, but once we bring it in, it's a lot easier to lift that weight up and down. Think of that with the biomechanics of the body. When we're moving certain movements, if the, if the barbell on a squat isn't directly over the middle of the foot or the center of gravity isn't there, it's gonna be really difficult and we're kind of trying to fight with one hand hiding behind our back. We're increasing the leverages and increasing moment arms so that the weight feels heavier even when it shouldn't be heavier. Uh, with that, we're wrapping up with V-ups and some jumps. Again, nothing crazy. I'm really enjoying the V-up movement and uh, just getting some blood flowing with the jumps. Again, the abs and conditioning kind of thrown in there just to keep the, to make sure this giant set really taxes the conditioning system and you, everyone, I'm, I'm turning around my point of view. I think everyone should start incorporating some uh, ab movement, some direct ab work, not necessarily to failure, but to just increase that exposure to it over the week, increase frequency. So keep it to like RPE 8, RPE 7, but we just want to increase the amount of reps, the amount of exposure, the blood flow to the abs so that we can really engage and learn to flex the core and just make it as strong as possible because one thing I've noticed about myself personally is that my abs are kind of my weakest weakest point in the chain and it's one of my weak points. So if you have a weak middle, it's going to be really difficult to transfer force from the floor to your hands, to the back, to the shoulders, to the chest. Pretty much it's, it's, it's in the middle of everything. It's at the core of your body. That's why we call it the core. But if you have a weak core, power transfer is going to leak. You're going to move a little bit and any movement in the core is going to, is a, is a, is a loss of power from the feet where you're pushing off to the hands or the back wherever you've got that weight. So really focus on 
just getting the core a little bit stronger. Nothing crazy. I'm not saying do like a thousand sit-ups, but maybe do sets of five while you're resting. Just throw in some ab movements here and there every day so that you're doing a little bit of light exposure to it. That way you're getting that increased frequency, that increased time on attention. So we can get some hypertrophy, get some high sh get some strength in the abs and the core. Uh, we, we follow the max effort work with the volume work today. Again, uh, trying to keep the workout times in check. I did have to cut out the last two last two sets there. So out of the three sets, we only did one. Not great. And again, you could argue that I'm not doing the program anymore, which I'm not. It's not as written. So a couple of modifications along the way, but I mean, it is what it is. I can't really help this. Again, we stuck with the 315 for five for the Romanian deadlifts. Uh, we dropped the weight for the uh, squats and we transferred over to box squats. Uh, which I kind of like, so we're not doing excessive pause squatting. I really enjoy the, the box squat with the yoke bar. It's kind of been a nice change from the regular A squat and then the regular barbell squat. So mixing up every now and then is kind of a good idea, I think, for mental mental refreshness and just keeping interest in the program. We don't have to hammer down the same movements, especially if you're not enjoying it. If you enjoy straight bar back squatting, go for it every day, all day long, do whatever you enjoy. But if you need some, uh, some variety, some mental change, just to mix it up, throw that in there so that it does keep you fresh. It does keep you energized and it does keep you looking forward to working out. Cause that's what we really need to maintain here. I would drop that down to 295 for six and that's, that's it. We just did some more V ups and jumps and that wraps up volume. Uh, we did that so that we could incorporate the dynamic effort lift for today, which was the deadlift. I did 225 with some gray elite FTS bands. I'll throw in on the deadlift how I'll measure up how far I'm lifting the weight and then the approximate tension we have. Uh, so you get an idea of where we're at. Ideally, we're staying within that 50% range of our one rep max. Uh, so we do focus on speed and technique. That's the one thing I've been trying to hammer in on this second phase. Speed, technique, and making sure the rest period stay within that reasonable time frame of 10 minutes. Uh, today, we drew that out to 11 minutes. So again, not that bad, but still, we're not sticking to the program. We're not sticking to that 10-minute mark. We're dragging it out a little bit, getting a little bit more extra rest. But I think that was, I mean, it's warranted for my conditioning levels, as well as to making sure that that form is still in check and we're still executing with speed. Um, I'll probably throw in here, a comparison between the first and the last set so you can see we can I can see how fast I'm moving from the first to the last set see if we're actually keeping that speed and momentum up if not something to work on in the future because ideally with a dynamic effort work it's in the name it's dynamic we need to keep that speed when you keep that explosiveness see how we're training the body to move faster and faster with some load there the load here isn't the driving f f factor with the speed is we don't want we're not too concerned with the weight on the bar we're concerned with how fast the bar is moving so keep that in mind when you're selecting weights and selecting uh, program management here keep an eye on that speed so you aren't dropping the speed and losing this program uh, functionality so that about wraps it up for today again today's workout actually took hour and 45 minutes so not on the shorter side of things we blew it out a little bit today lost track of time even with cutting out those two workouts, so a couple of a couple of things there. Rest periods are increasing and time between exercises is increasing. I need to keep an eye on that. I need to really stay regimented. I don't have a clock. I try and use a timer. Uh, the small iPhone timer is easy to get distracted by. So something to work on in the future to keep this tail end of this program in check. Like usual, I'll leave a playlist here. Uh, so that you can keep track with the Dark Horse training program, my results, my thoughts and reviews, and my overall thoughts and feelings about the program once it's over with. Uh, this has been Selwyn from Winch Strength, and remember, a better life through strength.